point just came up with my father that I'm going to share. Okay, so the issue was um, my dog, who is actually here with me. There's his tail. The issue is that he has aggression problems. The breed was made to hunt pigs, and so when he when he sees like. Uh, new dogs that he hasn't met before, or dogs that he's not familiar with. He just becomes extremely, extremely, extremely excited in a very aggressive way. Um, he'll run to the gate and just, uh, just like barking, 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 barking. And he'll put his hackles up and um, he, he scares people a lot because it, it looks like he wants to kill somebody which isn't, it, it's kind of like that, but he's not, he's not to use, uh, he's not like angry, he's, um, he's like just excited, but uh, those two things are so like closely linked because of his breed that it's still quite dangerous and sometimes when he goes into that, that state, he'll then direct that uh, energy at the other dog and will like bite her, not like bite but will like give her a, a nasty nip and that's totally not cool for, for the other dog and um, because he scares people so much that that really influences my father and he becomes afraid and he gets angry and then he directs the anger at me and so I've been trying to handle this this situation by going into fear and reaction to my father getting mad at me because he's scared about the neighbors uh, getting mad at him so then my father directs it to me, and then I get mad and direct it at the dog. And so in that, that fear and that anger, I haven't been able to uh, uh, effectively uh, like disconnect him from that state of aggression. Um, which, especially with this breed, isn't an easy thing to do anyway. So my solution has been to just keep him in the house. And uh, I take him out and exercise him uh, at night when we have this area of the city to ourselves. But during the day, he stays in the house with me, and I leave the door closed, so that that temptation to rush the gate isn't isn't there for him. And if he gets, if he can't see them, he gets less excited, and then will just kind of start barking. Then I can go into the other room and calm him down more easily and get his attention more easily, and just divert him away from that. Like, because he just gets so focused on on that state of like. So uh, a problem comes up when my dad is home on the weekends and wants to work in the garage. He'll be coming in and out of the house, and he doesn't want to uh, open and shut the door every time he comes in and goes out of the house. And so he's been leaving the door open, and Sanchez has been uh, rushing the gate, and then I've been going into that fear and uh, that anger that, that I explained, that cycle of that. And so uh, in the last week, my father and I have had like a few sparks of confrontation about this point of leaving the door open or having it closed. And um, I just went out again this afternoon to address the point again with my father because I saw he left the door open and I was like, well, this has to be solved. And so I went into the garage and brought up the point with my father. And the, the pr now this is what my vlog here is about, is this, this specific point of approaching my father about this issue. Because my father has been kind of spiteful about it and just like, well, you know, you're not going to change Sanchez's behavior. You should just um, accept that he does this and then accept the consequences, the other dog gets hurt, he uh, is a, a dangerous dog, which I find unacceptable. So I approached my father and I brought up the issue and we're going through this argument again and um, when, I, when I brought it up, when I brought the point up, I had this idea of myself as being like, able to handle it. I had an idea that I was able to direct the situation. And when the the system, the argument system just starts uh, building like it does, like charging itself between me and my father and just going back and forth and back and forth, um, I get angry and I start actually, I, I get angry and make it worse because uh, not from like 
I get angry and make it worse because I had that idea of myself as being able to handle it and my father is fucking up that idea that I had about myself because he's becoming spiteful and be like, no, I don't want to open and shut the door. Um, it's inconvenient for me. And then, been, and then me saying, well, you know, like, look at yourself. You're, you're like, basically saying, telling him that he's a failure as a father and he's, he's, uh, He's uh, like totally fucked up and just a complete failure and worthless and uh, not not using words that strongly but like kind of taking those that those kind of accusations those like undermining uh, soul choking accusations into my argument and so that's what I saw I was doing and I saw that me telling my father that he's a failure isn't gonna isn't gonna fix the situation at all so I just took a deep breath. And my father is becoming uh, spiteful and angry, and I'm spiteful and angry about this whole thing. And so I just took a deep breath and said, "Look, you know, this isn't going to work. What should we do about it?" And I was I was actually able to direct the point, which 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 is cool because I mean we worked out how we're, we both agree that I'm going to handle this situation. So I'm actually addressing the the whole emotional fear and anger cycle. So now that there's not this like this friction between us where I'm afraid that he's going to get mad at me, and he's afraid that someone else is going to get mad at him because we're we're dealing with the the, the the issue together, which makes it just loads easier than doing it alone. So that's that's super cool, and I, so that the a point to bring up is that uh, the confrontation wasn't necessary, and what actually was the problem was my idea of myself and the feeling that I'd associated with my being able to handle the situation, and then seeing that um, this idea actually wasn't able to handle the situation and then blending my father for that and becoming angry. So, I mean, if, if me and my father are able to talk through points, then I can't imagine that there's very many parents in the world that really are, are <laughs> there probably are some, um, that really are, um, like, just completely unable to be uh, dealt with in any way whatsoever. Which, yeah, there probably definitely are people like that in the world who just can't be lived with. So, uh, um, So, yeah, most, in the vast majority of instances where I have to work stuff out with my father, anger is just not necessary, ever. Um, and if I can't handle these these domestic issues with my dad and, and stay calm, and, I mean, if I'm going to use anger, then be able to just be absolutely certain that I'm I'm directing anger from a point of, of uh, stability and calm, so that anger just becomes uh, uh, like a tool, and I'm not actually possessed by the anger. If I can't direct um, the domestic situation without becoming possessed by anger and without actually blaming my dad for what's going on, actually not even, not so much blaming him for what's going on, but blaming him for me being angry, then I basically know for a fact that when I go into that experience of um, it's actually a lie because I'm, I'm blaming him for what's going on, but actually what I'm doing is blaming him for my being angry, which is is not not real because I actually am able to stop being angry.